So I'm going to talk a little bit about the decoder in this particular locomotive. So this is a brand new Walther's mainline Illinois Central High Hood Phase 2 GP9. These were released in February 2020 and Walther's is using uh, a loc sound essential sound unit economy decoder in this particular locomotive. And when I say economy, I mean exactly what that is, an economy or a uh, not as highly functioning decoder is what you're going to get with a Loke Sound Select or a Loke Sound 5 decoder, even a 4 for that matter. So I want to talk through some of the issues that I've had with this particular decoder. This locomotive is fresh out of the package. I have not done any programming with it on the Loke programmer. I have um, not changed any CVs and I'm going to show you and demonstrate what this does out of the package. One thing I'll say, I, I really try to be positive on this channel. I don't, even when I find things I don't like about a particular product, I really try to give it a positive spin because everybody's trying hard. I know that manufacturers are trying to produce uh, uh, affordable models for people. Not everybody can afford a high-end, uh, you know, Proto unit or a Genesis unit or Intermountain unit, whatever brand that you particularly care for. So, you know, I think one of the things that I was just disappointed about is it this is an economy decoder but it is a very very basic sound decoder and even out of the package it just doesn't function as well as it should so let me go ahead and power this up and I'll give you a demonstration of what's going on with this uh, particular decoder okay so I have this set up default address of 3 track power is already on um, so again, this is default out of the package, no CV changes at all. Go ahead and hit F F8 to initiate the startup sequence and the prime mover. Okay, so startup sequence is fine. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it just about three or four speed steps here. If you notice, and I know prototypically that going into notch one, a lot of locomotives you don't hear an RPM change. So here we are, speed step four, no RPM change. Up to speed step six, no RPM change. It takes up until speed step seven to actually get a uh, noticeable change in the RPMs. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up to about notch two. Now listen. It cycles down. It's still on speed step 14. Didn't touch the throttle. It notched down to idle. And now it's going to notch right back on up. and it goes up into really a higher notch than what we had done before. Sorry, it gets hung up on my grade crossing here. So you can see it's still ramped up really high. So now let's go ahead and bring this back down to speed step zero or idle on zero and it finally now is notching back down to the idle throttle so pretty slow response time to what the locomotive sounds are compared to the throttle so let's go ahead I'm gonna get this back here closer to the camera so again I've got it in reverse on speed step 7 Sorry, I'm going to have to go move it because it always gets hung up on the grade crossing. Okay, so again, it's on speed step 14, or basically the engine's in about a notch 2. Now, the interesting thing is, this does have dynamic brakes. And there, in reverse, it seems to be responding to the hand throttle much better than what it does going forward. So I'm going to go ahead 
and killed the sound here. Here, here's my frustration. I've done some reading of some online forums about the essential sound unit unit decoder that Loc Sound has produced. I know this is in some of the scale train uh, locomotives in their value line uh, locomotives. I'm very sorry. Again, I'm trying not to be overly critical, even when I find things wrong with some of the models. You know, I try to put a positive spin on it, but this is unacceptable to to purchase a locomotive right out of the package. The MSRP on this is two hundred dollars for it to run fifteen feet down my track and not have the sound work accordingly. This is unacceptable. Uh, I've read online, and what I know I have to do with this particular locomotive is, it seems like what's ending up what's ending up happening is. The dynamic brakes, which is F4 on this uh, locomotive, which I never touched the, the dynamic brakes. Somehow the decoder is thinking that the dynamic brakes sound, or the dynamic brakes are being activated, and it's bringing the engine RPMs down to idle and then throttling it back up. So in order to get this work properly, I'm going to have to go into uh, either JMRI or Loc Programmer and disable the dynamic brakes on this locomotive. So very, very frustrating. Um, you know, our, our industry, our, our hobby is better than this, and I'm just so disappointed that two very reputable, reputable brands like Loc Sound, ESU Loc Sound, and Walther's would, would produce a product like this. It's just, it's, it's really, really disappointing to me. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to uh, do some programming in this locomotive and hopefully solve this problem so we can get it to run better Okay, in case you haven't seen this one on my other videos here is my look programmer setup. I Just took a piece of uh, nine inch straight track ran a couple feeder wires off it connected to the look programmer Here's look programmer connects USB to the uh, computer and then on the computer there is free software, Loc Programmer, 5, Loc Programmer 5 software. You can download it from the ESU website. You actually do not need the Loc Programmer module to be able to download the software. So you can download the software, make some CV changes, uh, display what CV numbers have changed, and then you can actually change those on your command station. So it's a pretty slick way to know which um, CVs to change on an ESU decoder without actually having to purchase the module. You need to purchase the module to be able to read and write the actual decoder. Okay, so you can see I got my icons for all of my various software here. Just gonna double click on the ESU Look Programmer 5. So again, what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you how to disable the dynamic brakes so the video I just showed you where the locomotive uh, cycled through, it was running at about a notch two, then it would uh, throttle down to idle and then throttle back up. Um, what it's happening is it's engaging the, the dynamic brakes, even though I did not depress function four, so there's something with the decoder itself that it's automatically enabling the dynamic brakes. I, I purchased four sound units uh, to the high hoods, two chop nose. All four have the sound ESU essential sound unit decoder. Three out of the four locomotives out of the package behaved in the manner of the video I just showed. One of them works as it should. So I'm gonna show you real quick on how to reprogram to disable the dynamic brakes. Okay, so I put um, 9098 uh, one of the high hood units on the programming track. So the first thing you're going to do is click this uh, page with the green arrow. It says read the decoder. So it takes it 10 or 15 seconds and it's actually going to go through and do a, a read of the decoder. And then when it pops up, first thing we're going to check for is right here. Um, it will read and tell you what sound decoder is in your locomotive or what what ESU decoder is in your locomotive so this is an essential sound unit decoder we're using the short address here um, we'll we'll deal with with changing that in a little bit 
First thing I'm gonna do, and I read this online, click on tools, and then come down here to update decoder firmware. Go ahead and click on that. I've read that sometimes a decoder firmware update actually will help resolve some of the issues with the um, function of their decoder. So um, it's just good practice to probably do this. Uh, full disclosure, as I'm making this video, I've actually already done this on one of my other locomotives to, to, to try to troubleshoot the issue of the dynamic brakes activating. For me, updating the firmware did not solve the issue. So it was still throttling back down to idle. And I'm just gonna go ahead and show you on this 9098 unit how to disable the dynamic brakes. Okay, so once we're done with that, it did a full read. I'm just gonna go ahead right now, click on long address, defaults up to address of 128, so I'm gonna type in 9098. And then we're gonna click on this uh, page with the red arrow to the right, write decoder data. Do not click on this overwrite defaults with current values. I'll always leave that unchecked. Click next. Okay, so now we're using the long address on this locomotive. Next thing we're gonna do is click on the function mapping. And the function mapping, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, there's only a few sound slots in this locomotive. The prime mover, bell, horn, compressor, dynamic brakes, and then there's the drive hold. So what we have here, uh, function zero forward is the front light, reverse function zero is the rear light. I'm not sure why they have, and we can't change this with the ESU essential sound units. It used to be you could click on these and change, you know, the the algorithms here. You could get rid of the forward and reverse and all of that business. Cannot do that with these uh, these basic decoders. So I'm going to come down here. I know that F4 activates the dynamic brakes, and that is right here. So I'm just going to go ahead, click on this drop down. Gonna uncheck shift mode, uncheck brakes. And over here, sound slot, sound slot seven, I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that. Since this is forward F4, I'm gonna scroll down and see if there's a reverse F4. Here it is. I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna uncheck these. I don't feel bad on checking the dynamic brakes on this particular locomotive because Illinois Central locomotives don't have dynamic brakes. Uh, or at least these particular ones. The it, it was very uncommon that the uh, GP9s that Illinois Central bought had the dynamic brakes. So I'm really disabling a, a, a prototypical feature that's not present on these locomotives. So let's go ahead and write the decoder data. So it's writing it. Now before I exit, I'm gonna go ahead and do a file, save as, that's gonna save this project. And I have it, used to be Low Programmer 4, all of my files are in Low Programmer 4. So I double clicked on, I do have a subfolder in there for Low Programmer 5, since I only have a few of these in here. I'm gonna save this as nine, whoopsie. 9098, we'll just save that. Okay, now I'm gonna take you back to the layout and check this out to see if the if this fix just solved my issues. Okay, before I apply track power here, um, I'm just gonna show you to verify that the address change occurred. I'll go ahead and track power on, hit loco, nine zero nine eight enter i'm going to go ahead and turn the front headlight on here perfect reverse i know you can't see it on the video but uh the reverse does work so i'm going to run through a power-up sequence here i'm going to run the locomotive around the layout when the locomotive gets out of the camera's uh, view i'll shut the camera off but once it comes back around 
I'll turn the camera back on and give you a report on, on how it went. So here we go. So now that the locomotive's kind of gotten out of camera sight here, the solution for the problem is solved. Um, it would have already engaged the dynamic brakes by now. So that is how you're able to bypass that out of the box issue with the um, dynamic brakes kicking in. I'm going to do one quick thing here before I end this video. I'm going to actually show you the CV value changes so if you don't have a little program or if you just want to change these values with your DCC system I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that show you which uh, CV values you need to change sorry ignore my junk there I'm, I'm <clears throat> so you know uh, look I, I'm, I always try to look at the positive sides of things, not focus on the negatives. Um, it's a simple fix, but I also know that I'm a fairly experienced railroader and, you know, for an out of the box, it should run good without having to do a lot of CV modifications and we, we, we don't. Um, so I'm a little bit disappointed in that from that standpoint, but I hope you find this video to be helpful and to troubleshoot that particular issue. So I'm going to show you which CV values you need to change and, um, you know, good luck guys. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I went ahead and just changed and disabled the dynamic brakes. Here are the CV values that you need to change with your, um, with your DCC system. CB38 value is 0, 216 value is 0, 207 value is 0, 233, I'm sorry, 232 value of 0. So, again, um, I, I wish you guys all the best, and, you know, if you have any questions, just leave me a comment, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Thank you.